Hi Rockridge, this is Mrs. Berger and I'm here to walk you through the guided review for Mini Quiz C. Mini Quiz C is going to be on polynomial function behavior. So hopefully you remember a lot of this stuff. Uh, the first thing we're talking about in the review is end behavior. We're going to talk about all kinds of behavior, but the first thing we're going to talk about is end behavior. And the first question example we have here asks you find all of the functions here that share the same end behavior as this function here. Well, let's first think about what kind of end behavior this function has. So one of the more important aspects of this function is this term here. The degree of this function is odd, and the leading coefficient of this function is negative. So I'm immediately thinking, all right, this function must be acting like a falling line, basically, with four turns in the middle. But the end behavior looks like this. On the left, it's going up. On the right, it's going down. So I need to find other functions in my list here that are acting like this. So I look at the first one. This one's a linear, and it has a positive slope. And so a linear with a positive slope does not look like this, right? It's the opposite of that. So that's not one of my options. This one's a quadratic. It's an even degree. This one has ends that match, so they're down, down on both sides. So that doesn't match my odd degree. This one is an odd degree, but it has a positive leading coefficient, not a negative one. So this one acts just like this line up here, which is not matching our function. This one has an even degree, so its ends match down, down, which is not what we had to start with. So that's not a match. This one is linear with a negative leading coefficient. So this one is, in fact, acting like this. So that's a match. And then the last one, uh, this is an odd degree. So that's, that's a good match. And there's a negative leading coefficient. So it does act the same as our original function. So make sure you have that little um, chart in your head of how even and odd degrees and positive and negative leading coefficients work. And you should be good to go on that part of the quiz. Now on question number two, we're asking you to graph this function, fill in the table, and use the table to make your graph as, as clean and uh, precise as possible. So let's first talk about what degree this function is. Since this is the highest power here, this term here is going to be important. So we have a degree 4 polynomial. Our leading coefficient is a negative 1. And so automatically, we can start talking about end behavior. If it's an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, that means our ends match down, down. And so we write as x goes to, <coughs> sorry about that, try this again, as x goes to negative infinity on the left, f of x is going to negative infinity. On the right, as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is going to negative infinity again. Now, roots. We're going to use a couple of different tools to look at the roots for this. So the first thing we can do is plug this function in and ask your calculator, where are the roots for this? If you need to take a moment to plug this function into your calculator, please do so. Go ahead and pause the video. But you should have this entered into your y equals. And if you do a zoom 6, you can go ahead and take a look at what that looks like on your calculator. And you should see this function, again, a degree 4. And it looks like our end behavior was correct. We're down, down on the left and right. We have cross-throughs, we have cut-through roots, one, two, three, four of them. So we have nice real roots here, no imaginary roots. And we cut through, it appears that we cut through at negative two, negative one, one, and three. If you need to confirm each of these roots, you can always do second, trace, and find these zeros, right? Find the zeros, and we can ask the calculator Look at the root, let's look at the first one on the left here. Look between
here and here and tell me what that cross through is. Enter. Yep, it's telling me it's negative 2 comma 0. And you can do the same for all the other three roots. So we have a root at negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 3. Another way we can confirm this, if you didn't want to trust the calculator, is we could take each of these roots out. So we could take the negative 2 out using synthetic, right? If you've got negative 1, 1, 7, negative 1, and negative 6, you can take each of these roots out one at a time to confirm what you have. Right, and so now you're down to a cubic, uh, and clearly negative 2 works as a root. And then you can take the negative 1 out. You'll get down to a quadratic, and that quadratic should be factorable to an x minus 1 and x minus 3 to get your last three roots. So there are a couple of different ways you could do this algebraically as well as graphically, um, but we know that we're headed for four roots. If the roots that you found are, you only see two cross-throughs, you only see two real roots, and you're a degree four, you will need to use those two real roots to get down to a quadratic and then use the quadratic formula to find the last two imaginary roots. So make sure you're clear on the tools that you have at your disposal to find these roots. All right, so those are the four roots that we were expecting. And now y-intercept, we can always go here for the y-intercept. And why is that? Because the x-coordinate of any y-intercept is zero. So if we zeroed this out, zeroed this out, zeroed this out, and zeroed this out, you would be left with negative six. So we can start graphing this. We can start saying there's a cut through here, a cut through here, a cut through here, a cut through here, and then we have a y-intercept of negative six, and so we cross this axis here. This is all very, very helpful information. Additionally, we have n behavior that is down on the left and down on the right, so we know coming out of this, it's going down, and coming out of this, it's going down. Now we just need to know how high this goes, how low this goes, and how high this goes. We need the local extrema. We need the local maxes and mins. So from our graph, we know that we've got a max right here, and then a min here, and then a max here. You'll need to find what those are using your calculator. Second, trace. We're looking for a max first, so we'll hit four. And it wants left bound, that looks good enough. Here's to the left of the max I want. Here's to the right of the max I want. Enter. And you'll find a max of this. And we'll usually ask you to uh, round to three decimal places. So you'll find that coordinate of the max, this coordinate of the min, and this coordinate of the max. If you'd like, go ahead and pause the video to conduct that, and then you can check with me on the answers. So if you pause the video there, you can go ahead and check with me here on what you found for local maxes and mins. That first max we found together was negative 1.574 comma 2.879. Make sure you give both the x and y coordinate of the max and min. Then I looked for my local min, and I found it to be at 0.0. .0 Zero seven zero and negative six point zero three five, and then I found another max at two point two five four, comma twelve point nine four nine. We'll want to plot these immediately. And it'll be an estimate, right? So approximately negative one and a half and almost three. So approximately negative one and a half and then one, two, like 2.88. Yeah, let's call it right there. So that's as high as this thing gets here. And then it comes down through here to be joined at this min. So 0 0.07, so not quite 0 0.1, comma negative six 
and some change. So let's call it just below our x-intercept, right? Now, you would not be correct if you said that this min was at 0, comma, negative 6. It's not. It's a little to the right and down. So you'll need to make sure that you don't mistake your y-intercept for the min, because it's not. Okay? So we bottom out there, and then we'll come up through this 0. And we need to max out here at 2, call it 2.2 about, and then almost 13. So 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3. This is almost 13. So maybe about there is where our max is, or our other max is, our other local max. And so we'll top out there and then come back down to go through the x-axis here. That's what's required for a complete graph. Now that we've got that graph, let's make statements about our domain and range. Domain on this is forever to the left and forever to the right. So negative infinity to infinity, or you can go all real numbers. Make sure that you put negative infinity first on the left and positive infinity on the right. Otherwise, your answer is wrong. Range. This arrow here and this arrow here means that they will go on forever and ever and ever. So this is not the bottom of the range. Negative infinity is the bottom of our range. And then the top of our range, we go as high as this function ever gets. This is the highest this function ever gets. And so we'll say the y-coordinate of this max here, or 12.949, is the top of our max. And there's a solid circle there, so we'll put a hard bracket. So that's our domain and range for this function. Now, increasing and decreasing intervals. We're going to use the coordinates of our local maxes and mins to help us with this. I like going left to right on these to keep myself straight. So as I look at this function, I come in from negative infinity and I start off increasing. So from negative infinity, I am increasing, and I stop increasing at this local max here, at the x-coordinate of this local max, so negative 1.574. Then, also at negative 1.574, I start decreasing. So that's the beginning of my decreasing interval, negative 1.574. I'm sorry about that. Try to make that cleaner. Negative 1.574, and I'm increasing until, I'm sorry, I apologize. I am decreasing until this bottom out here at this min. So I'm decreasing all the way to this min here, 0 0.070. Then, at 0 0.070, I start climbing again. So my increasing interval begins, and I climb, 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 until the x-coordinate of this max, which is 2.254, 2.254. Then, at 2.254, 254, I start decreasing again. So that's the beginning of my decreasing interval. 2, 5, 4. And I decrease forever. An x value of infinity is the end of that interval. I apologize for the weird writing on this. Not sure why the tablet's doing this. But these are my increasing and decreasing intervals. So you would need all of these elements in the table, as well as this graph, to get full credit for this question on the quiz. All right, go ahead and flip the page. You've got some practice problems, independent practice 54, to practice these skills. Uh, make use of your calculator. Make use of your um, synthetic division skills to find the roots. Uh, make sure you use your calculator to find local maxes and mins. And good luck on the quiz.